Welcome to our first video for Matt 1062. Now, 1062 picks up right where 1061 left off. That is, doing integration rules. Back in 1061, we had learned how to take the integral of a bunch of sort of basic functions like polynomials or sine of x or e to the x, functions like that. Then, when we got to a little bit more complicated formulas, well, we were still able to take the integrals of those, but we used this method called u-substitution. And, and u-substitution was a methodology that was based on the chain rule, and if you could massage by a particular substitution your integrand a little bit, you could make it be one of those easier versions, like a polynomial or a trigonometric function, that you were simply able to evaluate by finding an antiderivative. Now, integration and differentiation are a little bit different because for differentiation, we're able to take the derivative of pretty much any function that we can imagine, at least ones that are made out of multiplying and composing the elementary functions, element e to the x and sine x, and so forth. But integration is not like that. It's, it's not the case that we can always integrate. It's not the case that we can always integrate by one methodology. There's going to be a bunch of them, and these different methodologies for integration are only going to apply in certain classes of functions. So for this video, we're going to focus on integration by parts, a particular methodology to deal with a particular type of integrant. And it applies when you look at the integral that you have, in this case we're going to look at the left-hand side, and that it can be written as the product of two things, one a function and the other its derivative then what the rule allows you to do is it allows you to rate this integral to a different one. It allows you to relate it to the integral of g of x times f prime of x. Now, why is this even useful? Why would we care? Well, it might be, and the hope would be, that the, the left-hand side is an integral that's complicated, one that we don't know how to do, but that the right-hand side, after making this change, after applying this formula, that the right-hand side is one that we do know how to do. Now, this is not the only way that integration by parts formulas can manifest itself. Sometimes they look a little bit different. We sometimes make the following substitution. I might call u the same thing as what I previously have as f of x. I might call v g of x. And then I could refer to du to be the combination, the derivative f prime of x dx, and I could call dv to be the derivative g prime of x dx. So let me imagine that I've done those four things, and I'm going to substitute them and see what this formula is going to give me. Well, uh, f is just u, so the integral of u, and then g prime of x dx, that's just dv is going to be equal to u times v minus the integral, well, g of x, that was just v, and f prime of x dx, that was du. So this is actually the, the format that I usually will just quote it in. The integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. Doesn't really matter, they're just both changes of notation. Okay, so let's look at a specific example. And it should be first pointed out that this particular integrand, x cosine of 3x, I don't know how to do it by our old methods. If, if I got rid of the x, if it was just cosine of 3x, I'd, I'd be able to do that. Uh, if it was cosine of 3x squared, well, then I could make a u substitution, right? I could be like u is 3x squared and du is 6x, and that x over here could be part of my du. I could do a u substitution, but I don't have that either. So let's go and see how we can use integration by parts. Now, it is sort of transparently a product of two things. I have an x over here and a cosine of 3x. Now, we don't necessarily know which should be the u and which should be the dv yet. It could be one way or the other. But let's just sort of, for now, pick one a little bit naively and see whether it works out. Sometimes it'll be the other way around, or sometimes you have to do some sort of weird manipulation, and it's not going to be one of the two factors that are clearly multiplied here. So let me set for our first just sort of guess here, u is equal to x, and dv equal to cosine of 3x dx. I might be wrong, 
but it's a good enough guess for now. Now, in order to apply my integration by parts formula, well, I need to know what du is, and I need to know what v is. So let's compute those two out. My du, well, derivative of x is just 1. That's easy enough. So 1 dx, or dx. And then for the integral of dv, I also know how to integrate this function. It's very important, by the way, that I, I chose a dv that I do know how to integrate. Otherwise, I'm not helping myself. If I can't figure out what the v is, I haven't done anything. So in order to figure out what our v is, well, this is a sine of 3x. If I would take the derivative of sine of 3x, that would be cos of 3x times 3. So I'll correct for that 3 by putting a 1 third out the front. OK, so that was an easy enough and, and straightforward integral. So now let's go and apply the integration by parts to it. We know our formula is going to be u times v minus v du. So first up, we want to have our u multiplied by our v. So that's u multiplied by 1 third sine of 3x. And then I'm going to subtract off the integral of v du. So the integral of 1 third sine of 3x, all multiplied by the dv, in this case, just multiplied by dx. And so this represents our u v minus dv du. Those are what those four components are. So this is our uv minus v du. Now, the hope was that by doing this conversion that the integral on the right-hand side is one that we know how to do, and indeed this is. This is just a relatively straightforward trigonometric term. So I can say that all of this is equal to uh, x divided by 3 sine 3x, just a slight cleanup of the left-hand side. Now I need to go and do this particular integral. OK, so the integral is sine is going to become a cosine, but Remember, cosine is going to, have, it's going to have to pick up a minus sign, so I put a plus here. And then this is going to be now 1 ninth cosine of 3x. And at the final stage, I'm going to go and put my plus c. This is the plus c that comes from doing this particular integral. So just a couple notes about this process. Firstly, we, we want it to be the case that, that the integral that we get is an easier one, that it's a, a simpler one. So in other words, when you're trying to figure out what the f is or what the, the u is, in the previous case, x went down to 1. And, and I sort of think that heuristically 1 is an easier function to deal with than x. And, and x is an easier function to deal with than x squared, which is easier than x cubed, and so on. So it's a little bit vague what we mean by simpler here. But, but that is the goal, that when you take your derivative, your f function gets a little bit nicer to work with. Second of all, when we're trying to figure out what our dv is going to be, or what our g prime of x dx is, however you choose to remember it, well, that can only be a useful thing if you can actually integrate that. If you have the g prime and if you can go to the g, or if you have the dv and you can go to the v. If you can't do either of those things, you haven't helped yourself. So our big goal is to hope that by choosing a u and a dv well, that the other integral that we have to do is one that we now know how to do. And we're going to see in class a, a bunch of sort of more complicated examples where perhaps the, the most obvious guess for u and dv isn't correct, and you've got to try a few times. And this is sort of not the, there's one method that tells you exactly how to go. You get to sort of explore a little bit and experiment. Maybe you have to do integration by parts twice or three times or introduce something weird or make some sort of substitution. That's going to be part of the fun of dealing with integration by parts. Final thing to point out is that when it comes to integration, we've got a pretty foolproof way to check things, which is just you get your answer, take its derivative, and see if it was the integrand that you started with. And indeed, as an exercise, you could do that for the previous example. Verify, indeed, that taking that derivative of the final answer is just going to give you the inside function, the original f times g prime of x.